Okay, right, well, overnight they've all cured quite nicely, so everything there is good and solid um, as needed. That's the one, and there's the other one. Everything lines up okay as you would expect it to. Right, so now what we need to do is get on with the stretchers um, to make the bed of the bed, <laughs> the bed frame for the bed itself. And um, so back to the two stretchers that we got, <clears throat> which are then things really we've got to do with this is attach the bolts which means drilling through the body of the um, bed set into the stretchers and um, the hole for the bolt itself which will pass right through it'll be counter sunk into the bed set in here then at um, two thirds of the bolts distance we want to drill a hole through the side on the inside of it uh, to put in the captive nut which is usually a barrel with a thread in it. That goes in there and then the bolt can go in and tighten to it. Now you want it reasonable distance in, so however long your bolt is, make sure that you've got, uh, I'd say a good 20 mil in from the end of the timber. Otherwise, as you're pulling it, it's just gonna break that bit of timber away and then you have no support at all. We wanna do that on all four corners of that and onto the bedsteads. Then, <coughs> The lats are going to go on simply upside down. <coughs> Just simply screwed onto there and onto there. Now what I'll be doing is spacing these evenly down, measuring the end and balancing it out so that they're the same. See it's going to be any measurements that won't work anyway because they're all probably going to be microscopically different. Right, so first thing get these and then drill down. Um, but I haven't even selected the bolts yet, so let's find some bolts. Right, and this is what I'm going to be using. Um, I've got some 16mm long bolts here, size 6s, and they've got some half penny washers on there, um, and some of the insert captive nuts. And the captive nuts have a one of clearance that's good, 10, 10 and a half mil. 10 and a half, a little bit sloppy. I'll go for the 10 mil um, on that. So we've got a, a six bolt layer, which will drill the hole through from that, but then also we need to clear that penny, half penny washer. Um, so put a portion of it on that 13. So that's gonna be 15 and a portion of it on there. <coughs> There's the leg. Now, as I said, I want to come in at least 20 mil. So I want to be there. So I'm going to take this 10 mil hole and make it between 20 and 30. And I need to compass that a bit to there. So I'm giving myself 40 mil into this, 20 mil into that which is half its depth. Using the test piece, what I'll do is I'll just drill first in here to give myself that much clearance and then I can set everything up on the bench. I have there a box key that will fit it. Um, now that's looking about the same size as the washer. I will take a clearance for that with the box of it. Okay, so there we have it. Um, I drill the pilot all in there first so everything will fit in nicely down there. And the counter, I drill the counter sink hole first so everything will fit in nicely and that is quite tight, which really is a good thing. <coughs> That's giving me a good distance. As you can see there, everything there seems quite perfect. That will fit in and turn. It's, you know, it's a little bit snug, is that? So, 
drop a side bit on that. Then test number two, hole's a little bit bigger. First off, that's very easy. Um, everything else the same, I've done this dip stop exactly the same. And there we have it. So, that is perfect. That is how I want in all eight holes made on this bed stakes. <coughs> and then we need to make very accurate holes into there. Then we're going to be drilling these first, getting them where we want them, so it will be central that way, and it will all be the same that way. But when we're going there, getting it that way is absolutely critical and it's quite a distance and this wood is far too long to upend in the drill press and then once we've got that this must be done dead central to that hole and dead perpendicular that way so again a few little challenges we need to overcome but first off let me drill all the oil from this nice and simply on the pillow drum So first action, what I want to do is, using the template that I've just done, the sample piece that I've done, I need to set the depth stop of the portion of it, so they're all exactly the same. So I just put it in there, take it down, it stops there, and then set the depth stop. That's good. center point of this piece of timber. which I'll do that by hand with a tape measure. Well, what I've done here, just to make things a little simpler to um, repeat the, the accuracy of that, um, is I've got a piece of the scrap off the stretcher, drill the holes in what I've put in 30 mil from the end of each and in the centre, and using just dowels, pegs, like so. I've marked the top, so I know where I want to be, and then I can just slide around and play around until I've got this, what looks to me to be a little bit square, which is like there. And now I've got perfect indents where I want the holes to go.
Now change into the bit that will go all the way through. Done the first one there just as test off screen so I can check and make sure I'm telling you correctly. What I've done to overcome the problem of accuracy is made a little jig. Let's get that out there first. Which is just the piece of wood I used as a marking gauge before. Cut it off and make it so it'll fit underneath. Mark the top because there's very slight difference. And then all I do is put it in place and clamp that into place. I can then drill through the ends, which, because I've got a 25mm there, is giving, keeping my drill straight to go in. Now I've only clamped it to that because there is a top and bottom. And when I get to the other end, I'll have to flip it to put it round to the other side. But I'll leave it there for now because I've still got another one at this side to do. Then marking 25mm in the centre there, using a little square to run along there, and then drill the hole to set in the set bolt, the captive bolt there. Um, now because it's pine that's very fibrous wood, there's, you need a knife to get rid of some little bits that will be left inside the hole from where it breaks through this hole. Um, but once you've done that, they're going in quite nicely and that's going to be a good strong joint. Okay, so I'll do the rest of them. I'll show you a couple of them as I'm doing them and then we can get on with the assembly. Right, so I'll run through the one here in full so you can see exactly what I'm doing. Again, the template is just, this is just to keep it flush with that. That's all it's for. Um, it's a case of keeping that on there and that keeps your drill bit level. So I just want that nicely there. Top, top, it's marked there as top. Got some terrible bubbles in this bush, so we're gonna allow a little bit for that. That's after that one. There's another one there. Terrible water in that bush. That's as close as I'm gonna get that. And start off with the pad drop. Now, you need to get this out of the way of the chuck, so I'll just put it up the top there. Everything's still hold tight, it's not going to move anywhere. And put it all the way through there. So I don't forget I need to turn that around because I'm going to be doing that in now so the top will be that side. Okay, now go back in again with it. Don't force it in anywhere, really it find its own alignment. Now keep it straight if you're going to get it. Then I want a straight line down the dead centre of that hole. That's it, that one there. That one there. Then I want 25mm. Remember I said 10mm. I want the hole to be, and that will be between the 20 and 30mm point, giving me enough threaded bar left to go into it. So the centre of that. 10 mil, we'll make it 25 mil. Um, and then I'll 10 mil bit to go down there. I've marked it there, which gives me the exact distance on there. You know? That's just, so just to touch the blue tape onto that. And I'm just going to drill through that. Now be pretty straight with this because you want that to line up. So nice and steady. Very 
close to that, but it will still go. the bottle just to clear out that hole going down that way because the, the drilling of that one will have moved it over. That next thing, <coughs> captive nuts. Put them in line. It's got a screw edge, so it doesn't really matter what matters is that we get it flush. That's all. Because flush means that hole should be lined up with the thread. I'm not testing them with the bed ends because I'm going to a little bit of confidence in what I'm doing should work and do it at the end. Right, next, the other end. Just making sure everything works. Well, the top which is good. Now the next thing I have to do is to put the lats across the two. Um, however, I know we've got everything nice and measured up, but it's probably going to be wise if I attach these to the upstands, that is the bedsteads, before putting them on. That way I can be sure the width is equal to the bolts that I just put on. Yeah, it can move out a couple of quite easily. So let's get a couple of these attacked first. Um. Stead together. Now get a good square and let's make sure everything is square. It isn't by a long way. That's okay. Probably a bit better. A bit better. Right. <coughs> these spaced exactly 100% of themselves so it's put one in as a spacer each time I go first let's get it squared up so the legs again in the way of me squaring this up properly so put these buttons on I can square for that thicker than the legs Okay. 
Actually, I think that is now the square that needs to be. Yeah. Yeah, that's going to be square. Yeah. Let <coughs> start putting lights in. As I said, put one in. That's a spacer. Okay, bouncy enough, solid enough. Okay, that's it, one bed done. Okay then, in conclusion, that's the bed made. I think you'll see that um, for a day, that's not a bad job. In fact, I started it yesterday afternoon, it's now just lunchtime. And with many breaks, taking a light shopping this morning, and numerous other things, um, I wouldn't say it was a full day's job. Um, if you've got, like I had, off-cuts, scraps, and recycled parts of beds, it may apply much quicker. Um, I had to buy the stretchers because the mattresses are bigger than the old-type bunk beds that I've acquired. Bigger than them. Um, so the stretch of the long parts weren't good enough so I to buy them. So in retrospect of that, the whole bed cost me £20. £30 per mattress, so I got it for 50 quid. That's not bad, custom built, matching, exactly what you want. One day's work, 50 quid, job's done. Mm, pretty good. I'm pleased with it. Okay, right, well, um, as I said, the next part of the project is to build the wardrobe that will be at the bottom of that bed. Um, that will then free up 
the other side so I can take down all the shelving and such because you know, you've got to keep living in this room while I'm doing it. Once I've got that out of the way, I can then make the second bed, which will go on top of that bed up to an L shape and be attached to the walls. So basically the same principle, but with longer legs. So I will have to buy probably a lot more material for that. I don't have legs that long. I'm now running out of my last um, stretch that I've got, but I will need more materials. Um, once that's in place, on its long legs, then I can build counter road um, boxes underneath for wardrobes, for toys, for such things. Um, there's some electrical to be done because there's two TVs going in there individually. Because you've got a nine year old and a two year old in the same room, I don't want them watching the same TV. Mm, funny that way. Um, so there'll be two TVs, one each. Um, and you know, various other bits and bats like that. But for now, first bed done. All I can say is thanks for watching. Hope you've enjoyed it. Any comments at all, any questions about it, shove them in the inbox at the bottom. And I'll respond to them all, I promise you. Right, see you later. Bye for now.